Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this new video. So in this today's video, we'll be solving the problem K sum parts. This is a medium level question and it's a problem of the day on Geeks for Geeks. And the prop company tags of this question are Flipkart, Amazon and Walmart. And the topic tags are tree and data structures. So let us go through the question now. Given a binary tree and an integer K, find the number of parts in the tree which, which have their sum equal to K. All right. So a path may start from any node and end at any node in the downward direction. Since the answer may be very large, compute it modulo 10 power 9 plus 7, isn't it? So this is the ex these are the examples that have been given. We'll see that in brief. And uh, your task, like expected time complexity is O of n and auxiliary space is O of i of 3. I made, I actually used auxiliary space to O of n. I was not able to compute any method that uses O of i of 3 uh, much precisely, but it's fine. I think we can uh, solve it in this case as well. And because n goes up to 10 power 4 and node values go, to, go from minus 10 power 5 to 10 power 5. So this is a very important point to be noted because there are cases where your node value can also be negative and k can also be negative it can go up to minus 10 power from, go start start from minus 10 power 9 to 10 power 9 all right so these are the constants that have been given so let us go through the question so that you'll understand uh, in brief so this is the example i'm, I'm considering example 2 for uh, you know explaining the question briefly so they're asking us to find the number of parts such that the sum is Five, all right the sum is five here the output is eight as you can see but what are the how is this eight so let us mark those parts so the first part that i can see is this so three three and two isn't it this sum, this path uh, what is the sum of this path five all right so this is one and what is the second part that i can see is three one and one isn't it so this path will also give you five three one and one this path will also give you five and what's the other path that i can see is this one three and one okay so i'll be using different colors so that it will be easy for you people to recognize three one one all right three one one and uh, for this particular case we have one three one all right one three one isn't it this is also a path that is giving you the sum equal to five all right now what is the other sum that uh, other path that we can see four and one so i'll be using a different thing now so this is four and one right this is four and one what is the sum of this four plus one that is also five fine now another path that i can uh, see is one minus one four one so it starts from uh, this so one minus one 4, 1. All right. So even this total sum is 5, isn't it? 1, mi 1 minus 1, 0 plus 1, 4, 4 plus 1, 5. So this is also giving you 5. All right. So 5 parts have been covered so far. And uh, what are the other parts that are left? So minus 1, 4, 2. So you can just take this path minus 1, 4, 2. All right. Minus 1, 4, 2. So why is this path the answer? Because 4 minus 1, 3 plus 2, 5. So this is also giving you the answer as 5. And uh, the other parts can be uh, 5. So this or, uh, this node alone, all right, this node alone is having the value of 5. So this is also one of the path, all right. So one, one node, like only single node will also constitute to one path. And second, uh, the other last one that we can see actually, we can actually see is this particular thing. I'll be using, uh, okay, this one, 1, minus 1 and 5, all right, 1, minus 1 and 5. So there are total of 8, okay, output is 8 because there are total of 8 paths. We are, we are able to uh, figure out 8 paths such that in all the parts, the paths, the sum is uh, equal to k that is equal to 5 all right i hope you people understood why is the reason why, like why out 8 uh, 8 is the output for this particular case all right so i'll just erase this part let us assume you are given an array all right you are given an array instead of a tree and it has some elements like this so 1 2 3 minus 2 and minus 5 and 4 and you can take another element like 6 all right so this is the array that has been given instead of a tree and your task is to find the number of uh, sub arrays whose sum is actually equal to k equal to 1 all right your sum is actually equal to 1 so what would be your approach My, our primary approach will be like to construct a prefix array all right so what is the prefix array in this case so this is 1 so when you come here it would be 3 when you come here it would be 6 when you come here 6 minus 2 equal to 4 when you come here 4 minus 5 that is equal to minus 1 when you come here minus 1 plus 4 that is equal to 3 and when you come here this it would be uh, 9 isn't it so what would this particular element denote? What does this particular element denote? So this is i equal to uh, 0, i equal to 1, i equal to 2, i equal to 3, i equal to 4, index, right? i equal to 5, i equal to 6. What does this particular uh, 4 denote? 4 denotes that it is the sum of elements from i equal to 0 to i equal to 3. Sum of elements, elements from i equal to 0 to i equal to 3. Isn't it? Uh, just give me a moment. Okay, it's recording. Uh, so it's the sum of elements from i equal to 0 to i equal to 3 fine now uh, now let us assume now the task is to find the number of sub arrays whose sum is equal to 1 
right so this one denotes right this one denotes sum of elements from i equal to 0 to i equal to 0 itself and that is actually equal to 1 and that is fine this constitutes one sub array sub array of size 1 and now what are the other things that are there for us so if you carefully see this 3 minus 2 this 3 minus 2 is also equal to 1 isn't it 3 minus 2 is also equal to 1 so this path this path this 2 this is a sub array of size 2 and this is also constituting our required condition like it is the sum is actually equal to 1 but how do we find this if you carefully observe here the value is equal to 3 here the value equal to 4 when you subtract them you get 4 minus 3 equal to 1 right 4 minus 3 equal to 1 what can i infer from this i can infer from this that this 3 denotes the sum from i equal to 0 to i equal to 2 and this 4 denotes the sum from i equal to 0 to i equal to 3 and this is actually equal to 3 and this is actually equal to 4 and when i subtract these two i'm getting one so what can i say that so from i equal to 0 to i equal to 2 i'm getting a sum of 3 then from i equal to 0 to i equal to 3 i'm getting a sum of 4 that means in between in between like i equal to 2 and i equal to 3 the sum that i'm getting is 1 isn't it so that is the reason 3 minus 2 equal to 1 right i hope you people are getting from i equal to 0 to i equal to 2 from uh, let us assume this is i equal to 0 and this is i equal to 2 and this is equal to i equal to 3 so 2 3 0 from this point to this point the sum is actually equal to 3 and from this point to this point the sum is actually equal to 4 and now what would this sum be that would be equal to 1 isn't it that's it that's what you are very evident that's what we can see here i hope you people are understanding this is how you will be doing the prefix array approach the same method we will also be using in this particularly in this 3a as well so how is what will be actually see we'll be seeing that right now so i'll just erase these points first uh, for our better convenience I'll, I'll be taking the example that has been given in the question uh, the test case that has been given all right so this is the test case that has been given right this is the test case that has been given now in this test case let us assume you are standing at this particular point okay this is the initial point that you have so what is the sum that you are having so far that is actually equal to one right the sum that you are having so far right now is only one so let us store that in a map okay let us store that in a map map of one is actually equal to one and also map of zero is also equal to one why i'll be explaining it later all right i'll be explaining it later now let us assume uh, i'll just denote this with a uh, blue ink now let us assume you're doing a call onto your left all right you're doing a call onto your left so in that case right now your sum is one and when you do a call onto your left when you do a call onto your left on this point what is your sum sum will be actually equal to four right sum will be actually equal to four now what will you be looking out for now you have got four so you'll be looking out for a path now you'll be looking out for a path which ends with four minus five which is equal to minus one isn't it now you'll be looking out for such a path right now you'll be looking out for such a path such that it ends with minus one the sum the sum of elements till that particular point is equal to minus one but do you find any paths that are ending with minus one you're storing all those things in your map right so did you store minus one till now no i did not store so it's fine i did not get anything and also i'll be updating here the map of four to be equal to one because we have found a path that is actually ending with sum to be four and how many paths do you have did you find only one now again assume you're calling on to your left now what is the sum that you have got so far sum equal to six right sum equal to six and update mp of six to be one and now what are you looking out for you are looking out for a path that ends with six minus five equal to one isn't it because you have got so far you have got the sum so far to be six and now you're looking out for a path that ends with one so that in between difference would be five and do you find one in your map yes i find one in my map here right so what can i infer from that so if you can see in the tree itself so starting here uh, okay uh, i'll be denoting it greening so here your sum is equal to one here your sum is equal to one here your sum is equal to six your sum is equal to six from one to six you have come that means you have traversed the sum of five in between isn't it you have traversed a sum of five in between that's the reason you have got six at the end of this path so that is the reason i'm storing map in, uh, like all the sums that i've got now because i've got a sum to be six and i'm looking out for a sum to be one and yes i have that one in my map so that means i had found one path and what is that path this is the path this 3 2 right 3 2 sum is 5 and yes it is actually equal to k so this is how i'll be getting a con conclusion like whether I have a path or not so mp of 6 i've updated to be 1 and now you'll be going to your back side because there are no childs to left like there is no left there is no right right there is no left child and right child for 2 so you'll be going back when you're going back when you're going back right when you're going back so your map of 6 would be decreased to uh, 0 like you'll be decreasing by 1 the reason being in the question it's being clearly stated you need to go only to the downwards but when you're going to 2, can you use this 2 once again when you're going to 1 or when you're going to follow some other path? No, you cannot use 2 because this is the dead end. This is the dead end. You cannot use 2 again. So that is the reason that 2 has been involved in the sum of 6, right? 6 has been formed because of this 2. Because of this 2, we have got the sum to be 6. That's the reason when you're not using 2 anymore, you'll be updating map of 6 by 1. Uh, you'll be decreasing it by 1. So that's the reason 1 minus 1 equal to 0. I hope you people understood this. Now, let us assume you're doing a right side call now. Okay. From this point, you're going to this particular point. So what would be your sum now? Your sum is actually equal to 5. 
sum is equal to 5. Now, what you will be looking out for? You will be looking out for 5 minus 5, which is equal to 0. 5 minus 5, which is equal to 0. So, I see 0 to be there in my map. So, 1. So, that means I got a path. I got a path. What is that path? Starting from this particular route that has been given to the this point. All the route, like starting from the initial node, initial node till this node, the whole path is actually giving me a sum of 5. So, that is the reason I have stored MP of 0 to be 1. MP of 0 denotes that like we are using the whole thing from the starting to the point that we are right now. So, when you are covering all the sum, like the, uh, the starting from the uh, initial node that has been given, the root to the point that we are right now, if the total sum constitutes to be k, in that case, we need to have 0, right? MP of 0 to be 1. If we, if we do not have this particular thing, like MP of 0 to be 1, we cannot add this to our total cases. So, that is the reason MP of 0 to be 1. It should be there. MP of 0 means that, yes, there is a uh, like path or there is a point which ends with sum to be 0. So, yes, that's the reason we have got a path to be 5. Okay, now let us even erase this point. Now, let us assume you are going uh, calling on to your only left because there is no right side to 1. So, now what is your sum? Sum is equal to sum equal to 6. And now what you will be looking out for? 6 minus uh, uh, your, your 6 minus 5 that is actually equal to 1. So, do you have 1 in your map? Yes, I do have a 1 in my map. So, what can I infer from here? So, you have your sum to be 1 here and you have your sum to be 6 here. You have your sum to be 6 here. So, in between from 1 to 6, you have covered means that means you have covered the sum of 5 in between. So, yes, the path here you can see 3 plus 1 plus 1 that is actually equal to 5. I hope you people understood. So, that is the reason it is important for us to store the sum values in a map and then try to come out uh, like figure out the conclusion. So, uh, now we have got a sum of 6 and now I will be looking out for a sum of 1 and yes, I do have a sum of 1 in my map. So, that is the reason I will be adding 1 count to my answer. So, I will also erase this point and when you're going back this is uh, gone this is also gone because there are no more paths to one and this is also gone because there are no more childs left side is covered right side is also covered so your sum of four will also be gone so in that case in that case what will be your map updated map so mp of four will be equal to zero and mp of uh, yeah, MP of 4 will only be equal to 0. Fine. MP of 4 will only be equal to 0. And your MP of 1 will also will still be 1 because you are on this point. Now, you still need to cover your right side. Right. Now, let us assume you are coming on this point. So, what is your sum now? Sum would be equal to 0. And what will be looking out for? 0 minus 5 equal to minus 5. So, do I have any path that is ending with minus 5 in my map? No, I do not have anything. Also, I will update my map. MP of 0 to be equal to. So, initially we have 1. Now, we will be having 2 here. Right. MP of 0 to be 2. Now, let us assume you are calling on to your left. If you are calling on to your left, what is your sum now? Sum would be equal to 4. Now, what will you be looking out for? 4 minus 5, 4 minus 5 equal to minus 1. So, you will be looking out for any path that is ending with uh, the sum of minus 1. So, do you have anything in your map? No, I do not have anything. So, I will be erasing this and also I will be updating my uh, map MP of 4 to be equal to 1. And now, uh, let us assume you are calling on your left right now. So, what will your sum be now? Sum will be equal to 5. Sum will be equal to 5. Now, what will you be looking out for? 5 minus 5 which is actually equal to 0. So, you will be looking out for that path that are actually ending with the sum equal to 0. How many do you have? You have 2. What are those? So, if you carefully observe. So, starting from the start like starting from the initial node the root node till this you find a sum of 5 isn't it you sum of 5 and also this particular path 4 plus 1 is also equal to 5 so there are two paths that are actually giving you a sum to be 5 i hope you people understood because there are things that are ending with 0 the sum to be 0 so what are those 1 minus 1 that ends with 0 and if there's nothing like that's the top like above the initial node that has been given it's an imaginary thing that's where that's where we have stored mp of 0 to be 1 so in these two cases we are able to find the sum to be 0 that so uh, we have got the uh, things that are required 5 minus 5 that is actually equal to 0 so there are two cases and we have got them right so I will be erasing this point uh, fine so when you are going back when you are going back so you will no more be having so here after coming to this particular point your MP of 5 is actually equal to MP of 5 is actually equal to 1 and when you are going back when you are going back when you are actually removing this point removing this point your some MP of uh, 5 would be 0 right MP of 5 would be 0 now when you are calling on to your right from 4 from this so your sum is actually equal to sum is actually equal to 6. Now, what you will be looking out for? 6 minus 5 equal to 1, isn't it? 6 minus 5 equal to 1. So, do you have 1 in your map? Yes, I do have a 1 in my map. So, how many paths are possible here? One path because MP of 1 is only actually equal to 1. So, what is that path? If you carefully observe that particular path, this is the path. 4 plus 2 minus 1, right? This path will actually give you the sum to be uh, like the sum to be equal to 5. I hope you people are getting it. So, I will just erase this because here the sum is equal to 1, here the sum equal to 1, here the sum equal to 6. So, from 1 to 6 you have traveled between, that means in between you should have traveled 5. So, that is the reason we have got one uh, path here. So, I will then erase this and uh, yeah. So, when you are actually going back, so this is gone. This is also gone because there is no more left child and right child to 4 and now minus 1 there are, uh, uh, there is a right child. So, in this case, um, your updated map would be MP of, uh, MP of 5 is equal to 0 
and MP of 4 is also equal to 0, right? And now you are on this point. So come to this right side now. So what is your sum now? Your sum is actually equal to 0 plus uh, this 5. So what you'll be looking out for? 5 minus 5. That is actually equal to 0. So how many zeros do you have so far? You have 2. So what are those? So what are those parts? Starting from the first node till this end, you get a sum of 5. And only this, only this will also give you a sum of 5. So there are two parts, right? Because MP of 0 equal to 2, we have got two parts. So this is also fine. This is also fine. And you'll be updating your map accordingly. MP of 5 to be equal to 1. And now there is only right child to 5. That's this. What is your sum now? Your sum is actually equal to sum is actually equal to 5 plus 6 that is equal to 11 isn't it uh, i hope i'm doing it right some 5 plus 6 equal to 11 okay now what you'll be looking out for 11 minus 5 that's actually 6 so you'll be looking out for a path that's actually going to have the endpoint to be 6 so do you have anything like that no you do not have anything so it's fine so it's also gone so all these things are completed so finally you'll be returning back and you'll be updating it uh, accordingly so wherever you have got some values of maps that you'll be adding to your answer so i that follows our pattern initially we have got 3 2 so 3 2 is covered and then we have got 3 1 1 3 1 1 is also covered right and then we have got 1 3 1 as well 1 3 1 is also covered and we have got 4 1 right 4 1 is actually 4 is actually involved in two parts so that is also fine and also minus 1 4 2 yeah we have also got this particular path right minus 1 4 2 this is also fine and 5 alone is there in two parts 1 minus 1 5 and uh, only 5 so that is also covered so every path is covered in this particular algorithm i hope you people understood how are we actually solving this now let us go through the code now so the same thing i have an unordered map ending so ending of 0 ending of 0 denotes 1 that means at ending at 0 some 0 is 1 there is 1 path that is actually ending at 0 that means uh, that one denotes there is nothing in our hand all right so ending of 0 equal to 1 initially means that yes there is no point there is no uh, like it, it is a case of having no roots no roots and that is also uh, possibility right so ending of 0 equal to 1 so you'll be calling the helper function so sum plus equal to root data the sum that you have got so far and you'll be looking out for sum minus k you'll be looking out for such a parts that are ending with sum minus k and if there are any you'll be adding that to the total count i have declared a global variable total to be 0 and ending of sum plus plus so you'll be updating your map so this is the map right so you'll be updating uh, that sum plus plus uh, every time you encounter that particular sum and you'll be calling your uh, sorry, helper function on to your left and to your right and once it's done you'll be uh, subtracting that ending of sum minus minus because we have seen the cases so once you have completed that particular node you cannot use that node to in your other parts that are not including it that means that is not having its left child or right child it's completely different part so we cannot use it so that's the reason ending of sum minus minus so in this fashion we'll be getting the total count and we'll be returning the total count after the final uh, uh, you know all the uh, complete uh, solve function has been completed right so i hope you people understood so uh, you can even find the codes in Java, C++, Python in the description. Please go through them. And if in case you're not able to understand at any point of time, please try to dry run the, you know, uh, code. I mean, dry run using any example. You will definitely understand it because it's very evident. It's just that whatever we apply in the 1D array, the same thing, the same prefix concept we are using here and trying to figure out the conclusions. Once we are on particular sum, we'll be looking out for sum minus k, right? That's very evident. That's very basic sense. So that's what we are applying here. And just a small logic, that particular sum cannot be used an another path right once a node is covered its left and right child is covered it cannot be used and onto another uh, path right so that's the reason we are subtracting it i i hope you people understood this particular explanation so thank you for watching stay tuned